Welcome to Arkansas Wildlife. It's all about fishing this week. First off, we're going to one of the best smallmouth bass streams in the state, and that's Crooked Creek. And better than that, we're going out with well-known wildlife artist, Dwayne Hayda, who's just as masterful with a fly rod as he is with a paintbrush. I'm out here, I am just seeing how the light changes and the, 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 the mood of the river and trying to be able to capture that into a painting or whether it's actually trying to capture that underwater world of a fish, like a smallmouth bass, is, is something that I never tire of. But first, June 8th, 9th, and 10th is free fishing weekend this year in Arkansas, and we're gonna tell you everything you need to know to take advantage of this once a year opportunity. All that and this week's winner of a hunting and fishing license right after this break. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. More than half a million people buy Arkansas fishing licenses each year. But for one weekend in June, anybody can try fishing in the natural state without purchasing a license. It's free fishing weekend and it happens every year. Uh, every year we look forward to free fishing weekend. We uh, did some digging through the archives and the first reference we could find to it was 1985. So this is at least our 32nd annual free fishing weekend. It always comes on the tail end of the national boating and fishing weekend. All the rules and regs, normal apply, you know, you need to follow your limits, get your guide, make sure you know what your rules are, where you go, but no license, no trout stamps uh, for any adult over 16 years of age. Uh, as always, anybody under 16 can fish anytime. Free fishing weekend is really a chance for folks to get out and either try fishing uh, for the first time, or maybe they hung up fishing a while ago, have memories as a child or whatever, and want to try again. This is basically a chance for folks to get a trial run, don't have to invest uh, any money in a license, and you know, get out there and give it a try. Finding a place to fish isn't hard. From big waters like Greer's Ferry Lake to small mountain creeks, natural state anglers have many choices. But during free fishing weekend, anglers 12 and under can find excellent fishing at Game and Fish Hatcheries. So every year uh, during free fishing weekend on the Saturday, we host uh, kids fishing derbies at our uh, hatcheries around the state. We have five. Uh, hatchery facilities, four warm water facilities that produce bass and crappie and catfish and things, and then one trout facility. And they are in, the trout is in Mammoth Springs, and the others are in Corning, Centerton, Hot Springs, and Lone Oak. And uh, these events are for kids 12 and under. They go from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. on Saturday. And uh, you need to bring your own fishing gear, but we'll definitely have the fish and, and uh, folks catch some really great fish. It's a good time with the family. Fishing at a hatchery is always a great place to go. You know, it's one to go fish, say, a freshly stocked pond or something, but these are the ponds where the fish are made, so it doesn't get any better than that. Free fishing weekend, we, we here consider as a game and fish event, but in reality, it's an official proclamation every year by the governor's office. Uh, so it's, it's a fully official state sanctioned event. People fish for many reasons. Some anglers are looking to fill a creel with fish for the dinner table. Others are looking for something less tangible, like good times with family and friends. Free Fishing Weekend is all about going out and giving it a free trial run, but uh, at $10.50, Arkansas has the second cheapest license uh, in the country. And so, you know, less than a dollar a month, you can go out. If you go look at uh, catfish fillets are about six to seven bucks a pound right now, you know, you catch one or two fish and you've paid for that thing already. So, you know, it's a heck of a bargain and, and uh, the memories and other things that go along with fishing and the time with family and friends is priceless. For more information about Free Fishing Weekend or where to enjoy one of our free fishing derbies, visit our website at agfc.com. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Zimmerman Sports Center on South University in Little Rock.
Ooh, 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 there's a big one. Many people fish. Some do it in a way that pushes it beyond a simple pastime. And then there are those who elevate angling to an art form. There we go. Dwayne Hayda's art takes many forms. At his Rivertown Gallery in downtown Mountain Home, you'll find the conventional definition of art. My fifth grade report card says Dwayne needs to spend more time on his math and less time drawing in class. When he isn't working in watercolors and acrylics, Hayda's medium is fly fishing. Fly fishing is just very aesthetic. Uh, a good casting loop is a, is a nice design element going through the air. The way uh, a stream breaks over rocks and logs creates a contrast of strong light against dark, booty green, deep water and that type of thing. Hayda's art influences his fishing. His fly patterns are proven effective and admired by anglers everywhere. But to an even greater degree, Hayda's fishing shapes his art. I'm out here, I am just seeing how the light changes and the, 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 the mood of the river and trying to be able to capture that into a painting or whether it's actually trying to capture that underwater world of a fish, like a smallmouth bass, is, is something that I never tire of. Hayda's genre is the outdoors, with an emphasis on the world's watery elements. It's often said that the foundation of art is knowledge of the subject. Dwayne Hayda has spent a lifetime in search of deeper insights on his favorite topic. Really blessed to have grown up in rural uh, Ozarks and Boone and Newton County and, and having creeks like this is places that were just, you know, my playground. And uh, so I was always spending time on the creek. Myriad streams cut through Arkansas's Ozark Highlands, but there's one that has captivated smallmouth bass anglers like no other. For Hayda, Crooked Creek might as well be holy water. Part of it is the fact that it is my roots and it is the, the thing that, uh, that I'm very familiar with. You know, it is my backyard, it is my heritage, if you will. This is a creek that's got great memories. It's, it's something that I fished ever since I was a child. My earliest fly fishing memories or any fishing memories are on this creek right here. Crooked Creek rises near Dog Patch in Newton County. It flows north to Harrison and turns eastward on an 80-mile serpentine journey to the White River. Generations of anglers have floated and waded Crooked Creek in search of its legendary smallmouth bass. Dwayne Hayda's love affair with the creek has lasted a lifetime, and his passion for its bronzeback denizens grows stronger every day. I've been lucky in my life to fish for a lot of different species in saltwater, freshwater, and smallmouth to this day are still my favorite. They're one of the greatest symbols of wild Ozarks. Pretty guy. Thank you. Oh man, isn't that just gorgeous? I think we're related. Um, I think we're, we're actually kindred. They're just the aquatic version of Dwayne Hayda. I've got spring water running through my veins. You know, I'm a, I'm a hillbilly kid born and raised here in the Ozarks. So I think we're, we're both kind of products of this uh, beautiful Ozarks environment. Hayda's art is also a product of that environment. His eye for angling is matched only by his keen eye for the outdoor scenes that are so prominent in his paintings. Obviously the outdoors and trying to recreate that with color, line, uh, and all the principles of art. So um, for me it was just a natural thing to see something out here, whether it was the, uh, the beauty of a smallmouth bass or a little long ear sunfish and, and try to recreate that color and that shape and everything. So I work at it, it's, it's my craft, it's what I, make part of my living from is, is being a professional artist. So, um, and the things that I paint are the things that I know and the things that I enjoy. Hayda knows Crooked Creek and brown bass, and that's a surefire formula for inspiration. You know, I, I'm just, uh, I'm a kid that kept fish bowls and aquariums and, uh, you know, buckets out in the lawn with, you know, anything I could catch in the creek. I was always kind of an aquarium manager as a kid because I just love fish. I think they're just a beautiful creature and, and the colors and that underwater world and everything. I love to put on uh, a, a snorkel and a mask and just float down these clear streams and stick my head up under the bushes and, and the rocks and ledges and just see this world happen before you. It's a great, great classroom. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Arkansas's own PK Grills, maker of the new PK360, the best and last grill you'll ever buy. Now, a lot of people don't realize this super clear water like this, just how 
educated these fish can get pretty quick. And how well they can just disappear. Right. Last I saw him, he kind of shot out of the grass. The smallmouth bass, you know, I mean, a four pounder out of these creeks is just huge. So it's obviously not really the size, but it's something about smallmouth bass and everything that they symbolize. It's, they have to have pure water conditions. They have to have uh, uh, cool water, unpolluted water, um, all the elements of survival that makes these smallmouth bass streams are what make the Ozarks what they are. The Ozarks lure anglers with a rugged beauty that's matched only by the promise of connecting with a fitful brown bass. You know, the old saying here in the hills is our, you know, our mountains aren't very tall, but our hollers are sure deep, you know, and there's a lot of truth to that is that um, it was all carved out by these rivers uh, washing through limestone on, over eons of time. And uh, so that's created this beautiful landscape. You know, God had to create a fish to go in with that, and, and I don't think we could have done a better job with a smallmouth bass. Of the numerous streams that have eroded the Ozark Plateau over time, few are as revered among smallmouth fishermen as Crooked Creek. I think it's the quality of the fishing uh, that it still has. Crooked Creek has got one of the higher growth rates of smallmouth in the state uh, as far as the quality and the quantity, the variety of the water. Uh, and the, and the size of fish you catch. It's sort of the full picture of what smallmouth fishing can be in Arkansas. These fish may be even more satisfying when they're fooled by hand-tied flies and brought to hand on light to medium fly tackle. You need to be a little bit better hunter. You need to uh, have some stalking skills. You need to be in tune with the stream. You need to know, you know what the minnows look like in this creek, what the crawfish color is, and that type of thing. To me, the fly rod is just a little more of a, a little more of a skillful game, and I think with that comes a little more of a challenge, which also translates into a lot more satisfaction. And that's why I'm doing it. I'm having a lot of fun out here, and, and the fly rod gives me the most fun. That's why I choose it. When Dwayne Hayda and Ben Levin fish together on Crooked Creek, it often looks like a smallmouth bass rodeo. Yeah, ooh, ooh, Dwayne, Dwayne, look at this one chasing here. Yeah, yeah. come here, Dwayne. Right. Keep this, him out this there. This is the one you want right here. Keep him out there. Yeah. Yeah, ooh, ooh, did you see the fish? Yeah, Mike? I did, I did. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know why this is, but almost always, you know, you may have what you think is a great fish, and there's always going to be one underneath him following him around that's bigger. Oh, oh good, good call, yeah, Ben. Yeah. Good call. Good call. <laughs> oh, oh, no, please. there's a big oh, one following after him. Yeah. After him. I'll yeah. keep this one on. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that sweet? That was pretty cool. Let's see what happens here. See if you can get. Uh oh, come on, man. Yeah. So, a lot of times when we catch a nice sized smallmouth, there'll be one, two, sometimes as many as five or six, a little posse, if you will, of smallmouth chasing him around, uh, doing a couple of things. One, uh, trying to see what he ate. Uh, secondly, trying to get in on the feeding frenzy that maybe is created. So a lot of times if you can cast very close into that uh, fish that's hooked, you're going to pick up a second strike. That aggressiveness is just one of many reasons these smallmouth bass inspire reverence. Remember that you're dealing with a wild animal um, that is, uh, you know, that they're not, uh, they're not manufactured anywhere, they don't fall out of the sky. There's about six of them under this rock here. Way to go. And, uh, oh, I just, yeah, one I of the other tap. It's amazing how aggressive these things get. Any little bit of commotion, and Good job. they just come out and uh, want to Good investigate. It's a nice one. Nice one. Good, good average size, you know, nothing huge, but. But oh, a, good a good quality fish. You just gotta remember where you're fishing. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> it's a good fish. Yeah. They've got a lot going against them. It's a hard life out here for them. So when you do catch that holy grail 19 incher, you know, I, you know, I've been lucky in my lifetime to hold a handful of that size that myself or my clients have caught. And it's just, uh, uh, honestly, it's a worshipful experience. You're holding that fish and you just realize everything it took from the nest to that size for that fish to go through, and and then the fight that he gave you. One of my friends here. <laughs> He's shrinking though. They do that. He's what? He's shrinking. He's shrinking. <laughs> uh, oh man! Yeah, look at that on a six-weight rod though. How he just 
Yeah, that's why we love them. That fish has got a trick up his sleeve all the way until you put your hand on his lip. Okay, I've never seen a fish that has more tricks at getting off the hook than a smallmouth bass. Maybe that's the reason the smallmouth also gives anglers the big eye. And it always amazes me, Ben and I just, you know, we hear people all the time talking about five pound smallmouth they catch in these creeks, and they're lying. <laughs> um, you know, there have been a few caught, but not in the numbers. But, but the thing is, people catch a three pounder, and that he just cool. feels like he's ever been of a five pound fish, you know, and they just get so Pretty caught big. up in that that uh, there's probably the most exaggerated fish that lives out there is a stream smallmouth bass, and and that's deserving. It's, it's, not, it's not the angler's fault necessarily, it's just the, the fish puts up such a, a respectable fight. And, and when you catch a smallmouth bass of that size quality, you won't ever forget it. There we go, here's a better one. Came out from under the rock. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. fish. Well, look at you. Yeah. There's look your at buddy. this one chasing him yep, here, there's Brian. Your buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, they're fun. You bet. Nice good job. Jump. Yeah. Way to go. <laughs> better one. Better, yeah. Good fish. Is that a good jump. 17? He's getting close. Probably. He's, yeah, that's a good Got fish, him. actually. Boy, he ate it good, too. These fish in this place are the stuff of memories. Sometimes they're preserved forever in brush strokes or painted with words on a page. It'll work. Other times, they persist in the mutual admiration among old friends. Dwayne's kind of the complete package, an incredible fisherman. Um, but it, but it's more than that, you know. It's it's the uh, it's the conservation end of it too, and then also his, his artistic eye uh, to sort of uh, see a different vision of things that, that other people don't necessarily see, and be able to put that on, on on paper on canvas as well. The respect is mutual. His skill level is just remarkable, and we're still learning from each other. The river teaches for life, and and so we we're always figuring this thing out. Perhaps the most important lesson is respect for these Ozark smallmouth bass. I'm kind of a watchman for them, I think, nowadays. I, you know, yeah, I, I uh, tease them and get to play with them with a fly rod, you know. I hope they'll forgive me for sticking them with a hook once in a while, but uh, <laughs> we, uh, we have a lot of fun together anyway. Raised on spring water, that's the result. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway. During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license. At the end of this season, we'll be giving away $500 worth of fishing gear with everything you need for outdoor adventures on Arkansas lakes and streams. It's all provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage at arkansaswildlife.com and click on the Watch and Win icon to enter. This week's winner is Philip Smith from Whitehall. Congratulations and thanks for watching.